Uh, this vid is to show some of the uh, science that I think is most useful to a guitarist. Hi, Bob here, 12th of uh, December 2018. I just want to explain the math to you a little bit more. Here's how you do math these days. Siri, Google, Amazon, primey thingy. What's the 12th through the 2? And then the machine will tell you what the 12th through the 2 is. And if you don't see, if you want to see the numbers and things, show me and, and it'll show you. And that's how you do math these days. You gotta trust these machines. I don't really trust the machines, but I got no choice, none of us do. So that's how you do math. So you don't need to worry about math no more. I used to have to scribble things out. I'd just run the whole algorithm in pencil, and erase it, check it out, double check everything. It worked really badly. But now you just say, Google, Amazon, the primey thing, uh, Siri, what, what, what's the Don 12 to two? What's the 12 through the two? and then you would get it. String length is always the starting point for every stringed instrument. The shorter the string length, the higher the frequency. The longer the string length, the lower the frequency. On the guitar, the frets mark out the equal tempered scale. Each fret shortens the string length by 1 over the semitone ratio, that's the 12th root of 2, or 2 to the 1 12th, and raises the pitch or frequency by the same semitone ratio. The semitone intervals are shown here as 2 to the 1 12, 2 to the 2 12, 2 to the 3 12, etc. And in each case, the numerator over the 12 indicates the fret number on the guitar fretboard. All the numbers here are approximated to the nearest whole number. Uh, the details of uh, decimals would uh, just get in the way of uh, explaining and understanding this stuff. Especially when playing with other instruments, you want to be aware of this. Live guitarists, singers, and many orchestral instruments can and do play the same note at different frequencies as the musical context requires. Interval sizes can be varied for a smoother sounding melodic line. A couple of ways the string vibrates, either an open string or a fretted string, they carry all of the upper harmonics with them. If you touch the string lightly at a critical point, you reduce the entire uh, vibration pattern to a single frequency, a single partial, a single pure partial. Open string, the entire string is vibrating with all the upper harmonics. Twelfth fret, from here to here, vibrates at twice the speed with all the upper harmonics going at twice the speed. the harmonic at the 12th fret, touching lightly without uh, depressing onto the fretboard. The entire string vibrates in halves. Seventh fret, vibrates in thirds. Fifth fret, it'll vibrate in quarters. And the ratios all come from the way the string subdivides when it's plucked. Here is the fundamental or first harmonic. And here is the second harmonic, divides the string in two. And here's the third harmonic, divides the string in three. And here is an octave from the uh, harmonics of a single string. And a perfect fifth from the harmonics of a single string. And I go into how the string is subdivided up into these uh, frequencies in the two uh, videos, Elastic String and uh, String Waves. Over on the uh, Elastic String video, at about two minutes, I got some more ideas on how the, the string subdivides. But uh, so far, they're only ideas and uh, haven't had too much interest in them. And I don't think they're too necessary for uh, understanding how to, how to play guitar. For the guitar body itself, I don't really have much myself. Uh, I refer you over the uh, guitar body video. I refer you to a number of other uh, sources, all of whom seem to know more about this than I do. Now, these are my own ideas on illustrating or demonstrating the sound wave as bands of pressure waves. There's some more detail in the uh, sound and air videos if you want that kind of stuff. But here... The bands represent increases in air pressure, all traveling at the same speed of sound 
343 meters per second. Uh, since they're all traveling at the same speed, the distances between them determine the frequency of repetition, which is the note itself. And the differences in frequency between the notes is the interval ratio, an octave, perfect fifth, major third, etc., uh, which can be shown then as physical differences in distance. I tried chord changes, which I think are the most important uh, thing for a, gu a guitarist, uh, using three notes with uh, six overtones for each and then changing to a three chord progression. It turns out to be much too complicated. Here's another variation on the, on the A major chord itself without a chord change. And this is uh, in grayscale. It's still too complicated for me, so I'm going to go back to uh, colored bands to analyze this for the moment. Okay, so here is what I've got so far. And this may be science. It may be more like science fiction. Uh, it may take a while for any of this to circulate. Uh, I'm only going to do a single chord, the A major chord, A, C sharp, and E. Uh, I'm not going to do the progression. It's just too complicated. Here it is in motion. Uh, the darkest bands are the fundamentals. The lighter colored bands represent the relative strengths of the overtones. The lines here represent the wavelengths of each of the three notes. And this is the distance between the repetition of the fundamental note. Now, for convenience, I am measuring each of these wavelengths as starting from the entry into the ear, which is where the mind starts interpreting the music. Uh, I don't think this is necessarily the case. In fact, I don't even see how it possibly could be the case. Even if you're sweep picking or even if you're uh, classical finger picking, you'll never get exactly uh, three strings to go at exactly the same instant of time. I think the relative length is much more important. But to illustrate that, I find it more convenient to start everything at the same point. In this case, the ear. It just looks better to me. Here's the root, the A chord, A equals 110. Here it is in motion. C sharp, this would give you the major third above A. Here's the E note, it's a perfect fifth above the uh, root, and a minor third above the C sharp. Here's the major third interval, that's the A and C sharp together. And when you're uh, calculating intervals from wavelengths, uh, you put the longer wavelength over the shorter wavelength. So a wavelength is similar to string length, which was shown earlier. They're both inverse to or one over the frequency interval ratio. In fact, using the equal tempered ratio of 2 to the 4 twelfths here, compare it to the fretboard. The fifth string is A 110 cycles per second, and 4 frets up is the C sharp at 139 cycles per second. In perfect or just intonation, you would get a ratio of 5 to 4. Equal temperament, it would be 2 to the 4 twelfths. And no, I am not going to try and visualize the difference. You can hear the difference, but it's much too uh, fine a difference on in visual, to visualize it. Here's the minor third in motion. That's C sharp to E. Here's the calculations. 6 to 5 for just intonation. And 2 to the 3 twelfths for equal temperament. And here's the perfect fifth interval, uh, 3 to 2 for just intonation, and 2 to the 7 twelfths for equal temperament. And I, I think I said before, the actual motion of uh, individual air particles is complicated and so far has not even been observed in detail. Uh, when I address some of the difficulties in the two sound and air videos, a large part of the audience disappeared. Now this approach, uh, as bands of pressure waves seems most useful to a guitarist because it provides an explanation for chords and harmony. And as, even if the bands are as nebulous as the bands in a rainbow. Even the shortest sounding chords contain a number of cycles of each note. And the harmony is shown here when the fundamental for each note sounds at the same time. 
the interval would be the frequency with which the two notes coincide. Now again, that may not be precise, but any difference must be consistent. This is the major third difference. It's a 5 to 4 ratio. A perfect fifth ratio, 6 to 4, and 3 to 2. Now, in a chord, all the notes are sounding at the same time. And while the inner ear and the mind of the listener can figure all this out pretty quickly, all by itself, uh, to visualize this as a demonstration here, the three notes of the A major triad in root position are separated from each other. And here are the notes, A equals 110, C sharp equals 139, E equals 165. And the math shows that the interval ratios multiplied by the frequency of the low note produces the higher note. And over on the left there, you see that the uh, notes coincide or sound at the same time in a 6 to 5 to 4 ratio. This gives you the major third, the minor third, and the perfect fifth in the A major chord. And here it is set in motion. And you can see that the same 6 to 5 to 4 ratio just keeps repeating itself at higher and higher multiples. Uh, these are all true or just intervals, and that's why they, uh, they sound so pure and simple. Uh, the uh, equal-tempered intervals are simply too difficult to draw here. Here's the first couple of cycles again. Uh, this is uh, pretty much of a proof-of-concept experiment. I'm looking for a good way to illustrate uh, chord changes and voice leading, and I don't have either the uh, musical or math skills to carry this any further. It takes a while for these things to be vetted and either left out of existence or uh, promoted to the next level. Just a few ideas in closing of no particular importance. These science and math type vids, I like to have the uh, guitar facing uh, with the body to the left and the fretboard to the right. It just uh, fits the graph image here a little bit better. The guitar shape is all circles and straight lines, and that allowed for quicker download times back in uh, the 56K dial-up days. It's about as abstract as the math and science, so I've kept it. It uh, simplifies things. But when I'm talking about theory and uh, learning guitar, the fretboard uh, is to the left and the body would be to the right. That's the more normal position for learning guitar. And just one more thing, and this is important. Uh, I was reading the neuroscience, the popular uh, explanations of science, and we are getting pretty good. Whatever signal is actually getting into the ear, whether I've got it right or whether I've got it wrong, they are beginning to understand exactly what's going on in the mind. And we will uh, soon have good answers. I'll put some links down below in the show more section.